Let's do this. Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here, and a lot has happened in 2016, for better or for worse. We got a lot of new videos, the studio was born, plenty has happened, and also a lot of smartphones are released. So this video will be your one-stop shop for picking one of them. This is for all the people who ask me every time you see me, hey, what phone should I get? This video is for you. So for the smartphones released in 2016, I'm gonna be giving you guys what's best in each category. And as I do with the smartphone awards, we'll give you guys a first place, so the best overall, but also a second place, a runner up, also really good. And then if there are some honorable mentions, we'll also mention those in each category as they deserve them. So this is the smartphone awards 2016. So the first up category is the best big smartphone. And you guys know, smartphones kind of get bigger and bigger every year. The average phone size a couple years ago was probably like 3.5 inch display. Now it's probably up near 4, 4.5 inches, maybe even higher than that. But these are gonna be the phones that are best at taking advantage of being a big phone. The best that use a big battery, that use big displays, big display features, things like that. So my number one first pick is gonna be the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. Samsung has always been good about this, and a lot of the Note features actually this year trickled down into this larger Galaxy S variant. So really this phone shares a lot with the Note, if you don't remember. It shares the same exact camera, which is great. It also has an excellent, really high resolution, big display. It has a lot of those same software features. It doesn't have a stylus, obviously, but it has the edge display stuff, it has multitasking, it has multi-window apps. So it really takes good advantage of being big, along with hardware-wise having a big battery. So Galaxy S7 Edge is your best big phone, but my second place is actually also really good and it's the LG V20. I talked about this earlier this year as being one of the most underrated smartphones. Not only is the main screen of this phone pretty big at 5.7 inches, but there's also a second screen up top too. So LG figures, hey, if you're gonna make a big phone, you might as well use the whole front of it. And I'm still not really sure about the placement of it, but I'm really happy that they kept that second display thing going on and they continue to evolve that. And it's just overall a giant piece of metal. So if you're into having a big phone, these two are your best picks. Now I have to give an honorable mention, of course, to the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Moment of silence for our fallen friend. But seriously, this was one of the best phones of the year this year. Note 7 had a big display, had a big battery, had a, enough room inside for a stylus, and it had a ton of software features to take advantage of being big. It had huge processing power, it had a great camera, like I said, but obviously we all know how that went with the battery situation and this phone exploding. This was honestly, truly one of the best phones of the year for 2016, but I can no longer recommend anyone actually buy one or keep one if you have one for your own safety. So Note 7 was great, but it can't make any of these lists. So next up category is the best compact smartphone. It's the opposite of the best big phone. So as the trend continues, as phones get bigger and bigger, it's harder and harder to find a great high-end flagship small phone. The, the flagship compact smartphone is a really rare breed right now. But that being said, it still does exist. There's not that many, but these do the best job of filling that gap. My number one pick is the iPhone 7. This is absolutely the best phone that Apple makes right now, and the performance is on point. This is maybe the best performer of any of these smartphones, no matter what their size, with that new chip. It has great fast storage, it has a great fast camera, the software is excellently optimized. So if you're into iOS, obviously the iPhone 7 is the smaller of the two iPhones, and this is one of the best ways you can go as far as compact performance. And then my second place close runner-up is Google Pixel. Not Google Pixel XL, obviously, but the Pixel also is, again, the best of what Google makes right now. It's a smaller brother and it packs all of the same exact features that the larger Pixel XL does. You get the full punch with the Snapdragon 821 and all that RAM and the pure stock Android, the Google Assistant, all that put together here, it makes the Pixel a great experience, again, in a pretty compact package. But that's about it. I don't even have any more honorable mentions that I would recommend even close to those two for compact phones released in 2016 that pack a big enough flagship punch. That's where it ends. So next up is best camera. 
And I love this category because among all the smartphones on this table, I can really say that smartphone cameras have gotten really good now. I think the margin of error, I said this last year, the margin of error between the number one best smartphone camera and the number five or six best smartphone camera is very small. If you pick almost any of the ones on this list, you're gonna have a good time. That being said, my overall winner is the Google Pixel and Pixel XL for taking the best photos of any smartphone camera. This was one of the most hyped cameras actually of the year because the Nexus line that came before it didn't take the best photos, but thanks to the Snapdragon 821 and HDR Plus, the new sensor takes fantastic photos and it lives up to the hype. It takes great low light shots, it does a great job eliminating noise, it takes multiple exposures in the daylight and has a fantastic dynamic range. Detail and sharpness is there, color is really saturated and good to look at. Overall, photos from the Pixel and Pixel XL look the best from I think just about any smartphone that's out. Now my number two pick for best camera in any smartphone goes to the iPhone 7 Plus. And I'm picking the Plus variant because it's got the dual cameras, but you could pick obviously the iPhone 7 as well. But the iPhone 7 Plus not only takes pretty great photos, great sharpness, pretty great detail, and obviously very natural colors, but it takes, I think in my opinion, the best video of any smartphone on this table. Obviously it's taking 4K video now and there's optical image stabilization in both variants, but video is something the iPhones do well and have done very well for the past couple of years. And the iPhone 7 Plus is no exception. Plus it still has the best app support for things like Snapchat, and Periscope and Instagram stories, the iPhone camera will do best with all of those. And then I'm gonna give a third place. My honorable mention goes to the Galaxy S7 for being pretty damn good at both, at photos and videos. It takes great selfies as well, very good wide angle front facing camera, but also it happens to have some of the fastest autofocus in any of the smartphones we see here. Again, pretty much any smartphone on this table is gonna take great photos and pretty good videos, but there you have the top three. So now next up we have a pretty popular category, the best budget smartphones. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, good smartphones are getting cheap and cheap smartphones are getting good. There's a lot more budget options this year and it's been a sort of a trend and I'll explain exactly what I mean by budget in a second, but not only do people not always want to get a six, $700 flagship smartphone subsize, they wanna get them off contract, but they also want that experience to live up to those six, $700 phones. These are the ones that do the best job of that. My number one pick for best budget smartphone is the OnePlus 3T. Now this phone comes in at a little over 400 bucks, so $429 right now is the highest end of what I consider budget. There's much cheaper smartphones out there, but as far as experience goes, this is a 100% a flagship smartphone. All the specs are there obviously, it's a Snapdragon 821, there are six gigs of RAM, and then you have a near stock Android experience on that pretty great five inch 1080p display, and obviously the fingerprint reader, and the camera on the back, 16 megapixels is pretty good, the battery life is pretty good, and it has some of the fastest charging in any smartphone ever. Like if we're comparing it to cars, like this is your Tesla Model S, this is your fastest zero to 60 time, or zero to 100 time, I might say, of anyone on this table. Even if you're not into that, the OnePlus 3 also came out this year, about eight months before that, and it also has a pretty low price, even might be lower than the 400 bucks now that it's older, and it still has great specs and a very similar experience with that near stock Android. My runner up, and this one got a a lot of hype earlier in the year is the ZTE Axon 7. It got a lot of hype for actually having some of the best speakers in any phone, and it still has some of the best speakers in any phone. I'm baffled all the time that I don't see more stereo front-facing speaker pairs. HTC was known for it, ZTE picked it right up where it left off, and that reason by itself is enough for it to make this list. It also has a near stock Android experience and it has a lot of hardware features people like, so it's pretty easy to go well there. It has a great low price tag. And then my honorable mentions are the Alcatel Idol 4S, and the Huawei Mate 9. Now the next up category is best battery life. And this is naturally gonna shift towards the bigger phones again because to have a great battery life, you need a big battery. But this, this is for your power user. This is for the person who's in the car like, can I borrow the charger? And it's 10 a.m. and they have like 20% battery already. This is for the heavy user who uses their phone a lot and needs it to last all day. So if you are that person, the best option for you is the Moto Z Play. Now I have the regular Moto Z here, but the Moto Z Play will be a little bit of a thicker version of this. It'll have the same software on the front. It'll have a very similar display, a 1080p display, same great specs, three gigs of RAM, and it'll be rocking a 3,510 milliamp hour battery. And there's something about what Motorola's been doing with battery that they won last year and they're winning this year with their phone again. Moto Z Play 
is getting people like six hours of screen on time, which if you're an Android person, you know how impressive that is. So if you're a heavy Android user and you want all day battery life, you can't go wrong with Moto Z Play. Now that being said, there's actually some other phones on this list that come pretty close. My runner up here is the Google Pixel XL. It has a 3,450 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty close. And it's a larger version obviously over the regular Pixel. But because of its pure stock Android and because of the optimization Google's put in with this Pixel line, you're also getting five plus hours of screen on time. If you're a heavy Android user, Pixel XL is not gonna let you down either. And I'm gonna give a third place in this category as well because we're also seeing pretty great battery life out of the iPhone 7 Plus. It has only a 2,900 milliamp hour battery, but because of, again, Apple's optimization, because how well iOS works with its chips, it has fantastic standby time. So if you're one of those people who can end the day at 50% battery, you don't even have to worry about charging overnight because you'll probably wake up the next day with 50% battery. So despite having that smaller cell size, the iPhone tends to keep making this list because of how well it's optimized. And also even honorable mention to, like I said, the fastest recharging phone that I've ever seen with dash charging. It's the OnePlus 3 and the OnePlus 3T. It might not have the biggest battery or the longest battery life, but the fact that it recharges so quickly makes it a lot easier when you're worrying about how long it'll last. Also, honorable mention, Galaxy S7 Active. That low-key has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. So if you're looking for a durable phone with a long battery, S7 Active. So next up is sort of a fun one. It's sort of shifted from last year, which was best design. And we're just gonna call it the best build. The best built phone released in 2016. And believe it or not, this one was kind of a tie for me between two really great phones, but I'm gonna have to give first place to the Galaxy S7 Edge. It's just so good, it's so pretty. Again, especially in this gold one, you can get a silver variant, the titanium, it's just so sleek. And it has so many features that people like to see in high-end smartphones. So it's got removable storage, it is waterproof, it's really shiny, it's really pretty, it's got the angles, it's got metal bands all the way around. It's just such a well-built phone. Doesn't have a USB Type-C jack yet. It does have a headphone jack, which is nice. And also the speakers are not the best. Again, probably because of the waterproofing. But overall, this is gonna have to be number one or a close sliver ahead of my second pick, which is the HTC 10. The HTC 10 is built like an absolute tank. Uh, it's got the great high-end internals, but just looking around this phone, the unibody metal, there is so much metal here on the sides, the big chamfer all the way around and on the back. So just in terms of sheer industrial design, the HTC 10 does not mess around. It doesn't pretend to be anything else. It is a tank in every sense of the word and uh, it's built super well. So that's why it gets its spot on this list. And you probably already know where I'm going with the craziest design. My honorable mention goes to a phone I made a video all about the design of and how much I love the risk it took. And that's the Xiaomi Mi Mix. The huge display bezel-less phone from 2016. This one made a statement. I mean, I, I loved making this video just because I was raving about how much I loved it. It happens to be maybe the slipperiest phone of all time, but it does come with a case if you don't want to full-time leave it exposed like that. But yeah, the design of the Xiaomi Mi Mix has it easily in my craziest design of the year. Now here's a good one. Next category, the most improved award. And this one's kind of a fun one because I was, I was tossing up again several options for it. But if you look back at last year, the bust of the year was the HTC A9. And I have to give the most improved award to the HTC 10 because they stepped right back up to almost the heights that they were at before. I say almost because obviously there's no boom sound. They still have a front facing speaker and they still have a lot of where they came back, but they have the high end specs again and they did a great job with the software experience of making it not only very similar to stock Android, but having it really readily upgradable and still including a bunch of features that are over stock Android. And then there is the bust of the year. And surprisingly, I actually had like a couple candidates for this one also. It's 2016, weird things happen. Now, I think the obvious pick for bust of the year, just because of phrasing, has to go to the Galaxy Note 7, who is literally busting open batteries all over the country. And it's a weird bust of the year because it was one of the best phones of the entire year before it started having problems. If you saw the review already, you already know what happened, but it started catching fire, and then they started handing out replacement Note 7s to people who were breaking, they recalled the old ones, then the replacements started exploding too. So it's a dangerous phone, you can't buy it anymore. Bust of the year, really disappointing, and it'll be interesting to see what Samsung does next year with Note 8. But here's another one to think about, Project Aura. 
Remember the videos we were looking at for Project Aura of this modular smartphone concept that we were convinced was going to come to fruition. There was a whole team dedicated to it, it had all these videos and people were getting really hyped about being able to put together their own smartphone with all these pieces. Project Aura got really lit for a second there and I guess now they just killed the project. I can't even tell you why. I'll leave a linked article below that sort of does a good job of explaining the whole situation, but you can just uh, scrap Project Aura. Don't expect it anytime soon. We saw the modular thing happen a couple of times. We saw LG G5, which could also be considered a bust of the year. It's not the worst thing that ever happened to LG, but it was kind of a, a weird experience with that pulling out the battery thing and not a whole lot of modules ever happened with it. And we also got Moto Z. Not a bust of the year by any means, but another modular thing. So I guess Project Aura didn't completely fail in its mission to promote this sort of a modular concept, but the actual project is now dead. So that brings me to my overall MVP, most valuable phone. It's my best phone of the year, and it's usually, it tends to be the phone that I use the most often during the year. So that actually, that criteria made it really easy for me to pick. For me, the MVP is the Google Pixel XL. This might not have been the prettiest phone in the world. It might not have been the best look or feel in the hand. It definitely isn't, especially from the ones on this table. But the software experience more than made up for that. And that's why I keep gravitating back towards near stock Android phones because the optimization is great. The battery life is great. This one turned out to have an excellent camera. And then just things just fly along. They're smooth. The fingerprint reader is smooth. The home button is smooth. The assistant is smooth. Everything, the animations and frame rates and gaming and performance and multitasking are so smooth with Pixel and Pixel XL. I'm a big phone person, I went with the XL, but I also have two pockets. And in my other pocket, I pretty much always have my second place, which is the iPhone 7 Plus. Even if it's just for its performance, this is one of the fastest and most impressive phones of the year in terms of internals. Uh, iOS, obviously, optimization does great, but I take a lot of photos, I take a lot of videos, I share a lot of stuff, I go back and forth between Twitter and Snapchat and Instagram, and you guys know all the links are below, but these are the types of things that make me carry two phones because they're both so good. Now you're probably noting, Marquez, you haven't reviewed the iPhone 7 yet. I, and yes, you're right, I did my first impressions of this phone, and I did some other later videos, but I haven't done my full review, but I'll say, still expect it. It's not a terrible idea, right? I'll probably do something like a six months later uh, when this phone has been in my pocket for a long time. But obviously because of its placement in this list, you know that I like it. Also, I still think Note 7 probably would have been one of my close runner-ups if they didn't start to explode, but they did. So there you have it, guys. No matter what you think of 2016, there actually turned out to be a lot of really good smartphone options. A little something for everyone, you know? If you're a selfie taker or you take a lot of photos or videos, you got good cameras, if you need a long battery life, you're a power user, you got big hands, you want a big phone, or you got small hands, you want a small phone. All kinds of preferences were rewarded in some way this year. So that's been it. Maybe let me know what your MVP is, most valuable phone, best phone of 2016, and your opinion in the comments below. Either way, that's been it. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.